As a member of Congress, I introduced a resolution that called for the protection of Hindus and religious minorities in Bangladesh, people who continue to be targeted and persecuted to this day. Now, the height of this persecution actually began 50 years ago when the Pakistani army systematically murdered, raped, and drove from their homes millions of Bengali Hindus because of their religion and ethnicity. On March 25th, 1971, was the beginning of a systematic targeting of Hindus in Bangladesh by the Pakistani military. It began in Hindu neighborhoods and villages, first at Jagannath Hall, which was a Hindu dormitory in Dhaka University, where five to 10,000 people were killed on that first night alone. This genocidal campaign continued for 10 months resulting in two to three million people killed, hundreds of thousands of women and girls raped, and more than 10 million forced to flee their homes. U.S. Senator Ted Kennedy went to visit the Bangladeshi refugees at that time and said, quote, nothing is more clear or more easily documented than the systematic campaign of terror and its genocidal consequences launched by the Pakistan army on the night of March 25th. Hardest hit have been members of the Hindu community who have been robbed of their lands and shops, systematically slaughtered, and in some places, painted with yellow patches marked H." End of quote. Now the Islamist, not to be confused with Islam, the Islamist persecution of Hindus and other religious minorities in Bangladesh didn't end with Bangladesh's independence. That campaign continues to this day with horrific targeted attacks, murders, homes being burned down, and families who continue to be forced to flee. In the early 1900s, Hindus made up roughly 33% of the Bangladesh population. Because of this persistent Islamist campaign targeting Hindus, just 8% of Bangladesh's population are Hindus today. Just a few days ago in Bangladesh, Hundreds of hardline Islamist extremists attacked Hindu temples, uh, destroyed a train, set fire to government buildings, the press club and public buses, leaving dead and injured behind. Unfortunately, the Islamists' campaign of terror against Hindus, other religious minorities, secularists, atheists, and others in Bangladesh is not unique. It's been going on for centuries. Now, prior to US regime change wars in Iraq, Libya, and Syria, which either toppled or weakened secular authoritarian leaders who protected religious minorities from Islamist jihadists, there were 1.5 million Christians in Iraq and 2.2 million in Syria. Now there are an estimated two to 300,000 Christians in Iraq and 450,000 in Syria. Afghanistan was a very multi-religious country which included Hindus, Buddhists, Zoroastrians, and more prior to the Islamist takeover. Today, it is estimated there are around 1,000 Hindus who remain. Religious minorities make up less than 1% of Afghanistan's population. Until the leaders of the United States and the world condemn and commit to defeating the Islamist exclusivist ideology, an ideology which holds that all non-Muslims and many so-called quote-unquote heretical Muslims need to be wiped from the face of the earth, enslaved, or at the very least kept as second-class citizens without the right to own land, worship openly, etc., like in Pakistan, the jihadist campaign of terror will continue throughout the world.